Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, here's a challenge for you. If I were to show you two images, you can quite easily tell me whether they're similar or not. So that's not the challenge. The challenge is you have to tell me how, how they're actually similar, right? What made you say they're similar? As it turns out, this isn't easy, is it? How we as humans tell uh, whether any two things are similar or not requires that we have a contextual understanding of what it is. If we look at a picture, we don't just see a picture, right? We understand the content inside that picture and we're able to say whether these two pictures are similar or not. Now, translating that to a computer is difficult. A computer doesn't have contextual understanding of an image. It's only able to, well, look at the pixels and tell you something about those. So as you can imagine, it is extremely challenging for a computer to say whether two things are similar. And we need to do that a lot, right? One big example is YouTube's content ID system. How does it tell that you're uploading a copyrighted TV show? Obviously, if you just rip it as it is and upload it, that's easy. But what if you've done something like film your screen with a phone? These two things clearly don't look similar to a computer, but to the human eye, they are, well, essentially the same thing. Of course, Content ID isn't a great example because it has its fair share of fails, but it represents, you know, thinking along the right lines. It represents us trying to get computers to understand things the way humans do. Now, hopefully you've heard of what a hash is, but very quickly, a hash basically takes some information and re-represents it as a string. Now, generally for hashes, what we want to do is that even a tiny little change in the original creates a huge change in the computed hash. We call this the avalanche effect. The idea is that it's very easy to tell when two things are different. So that's the whole point of a normal hash. But that is the opposite of what we want when it comes to you know, this sort of perceptual magic. Ideally, when we have two things that are similar, the algorithm will give us very similar hashes. Whereas if it's very different, then yeah, we should get different hashes, right? That is essentially what a perceptual hash is. Not only does it re-represent our original information in a textual way that is easier to manipulate, it must encapsulate some of that, well, similarity and difference aspect of things. As it turns out, perceptual hashes are not easy to do. Uh, one big example that I've come across when I was researching this episode is this algorithm called phash. Essentially how phash works is, well, it just tries to look at media the way in which humans look at it. For example, when it comes to images, it attempts to find edges within the image. It attempts to find what we call corners within the image. As it turns out, that's quite similar to how well the human eye and the human brain actually perceives images, right? We look at outlines and we use the outlines to tell us what that thing could potentially be. So yeah, for an algorithm like phash, it has to kind of emulate how the human perception actually works. So yeah, that's how phash actually approaches this problem. And even then, it gives me pretty mixed results. Here's the deal. What you can do is they actually have a page on the phash website that allows you to upload some media and it'll tell you whether they're similar or not. The example we've been using actually worked quite well. However, some others I've tried did not. Go ahead and try out the demo and see if you can break the algorithm somehow. So yeah, this is a very interesting field. And yeah, I think there is still quite a bit of work to be done in it before it becomes something that is, you know, extremely solid. I guess there's always room for uncertainty. You know, when it comes to things like this, algorithms can only give you a percentage uh, as to whether these things are similar or not. But yeah, this whole field is still not perfect just yet. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.